Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm here making a video of my 55 gallon tank. Um, I wanted to make a video because I like how everything is growing now. I finally decided to start dosing fertilizers, and uh, that was the missing key. Everything is just seemed to be growing very, very nicely, actually. I want to start off with the purple cabamba here. Uh, this was a plant that I was going to give up on again. I gave up on the first one, on the green cabamba, which is one of my first plants I ever got, and they just completely rotted on me. And, but now it's looking pretty good, actually. It's, uh, it has that nice uh, brownish, yellowish tint in the top of it. I mean, if you look at it from the bottom, it looks nice and purple. Like when I, when I cut them and pull them out, they look really nice. Um, what else is growing good? My crypts are going good. This, this is my first crypt ever. Uh, it's Crypt Walkeri Lutea. Um, can't get much information on it online, it, but it's, I mean, it seems to be doing pretty good. It has a lot of, you know, a lot more little stems or little flowers. I don't even know what you call them, little leaves. Uh, my star grass in the back is finally starting to take off. Uh, you know, at first it took it a while. Now that it's getting a nice high lights, I finally started running four, four lights. Usually I would be running two. But since I got all these nice high highlight plants and all these bushy plants blocking everything, I decided I might as well to turn it up a little bit. It was about time anyways too. And since I started dosing the fertilizers, highlight, and the CO2 is amped up. So, you know, I'm getting nice, very nice growth actually. Um, my Brazilian pennyware right there grows very, very nicely. Again, I mean, it's growing right there again in the top. And I mean, I like it there. It's, you know... It's pretty cool. It's a cool looking plant. It you know it doesn't even have to be you know dug up into the substrate. That one's just pretty much kind of like just floating right there. Um, and it's a cool plant. It just grows. But if you look at the like all the in between every node, it has like a whole bunch of um, of roots, and they're soft roots. They don't really go into the substrate. Um, and, and it just irritates me, so I used to cut them all off. Now I leave them there so the guppy fry can actually go in them. As you, you see them over there, they hide from the big angel. Oh, look, my assassin snail is out too. Uh, might as well, since they're out, might as well talk about them. Um, I had a... Oh, this is the big angel. Well, he... For, you know, let me, let me just go one thing at a time. First, let's talk about the assassin snail. The assassin snail here, very, very, very efficient, guys. At first, I used to see snails all the time. After I got him, a lot of empty shells, and they pretty much leave the little ones. I got two of them, and uh, but but they've been doing a great job. Like I don't see as many snails as I used to, and uh, they're pretty cool actually. So I like this type of snail. Um, I also feed them um, sinking pellets for the cichlids. Well, usually the sinking pellets are for the for the rams. Well, the wild caught female, she doesn't like to come on top, so I feed her the sinking pellets. But uh, the um, the snails seem to love it. And also, after I got the big black angelfish, I haven't seen many shrimp out. Okay, there's one, there's one there, and there's one right there. So I got two of them. Uh, I know I'm jumping back and forth from things to things, but uh, yeah, after I got the after I got the big angelfish, I haven't I've noticed my population in shrimp has declined dramatically, and while I was doing a water change on Saturday, uh, I was cutting the plants and a shrimp kind of jumped out and that was the last of him, and then I found out then then he showed me why I have no shrimp left, but it's okay because I you know I have the ten gallon set up for the shrimps. This is, you know, for my fish. I I love angelfish, and you know, I wanna I wanted to have them. So now that I do, I don't really care if they eat all the shrimp or not. The it's pretty much it's a circle of life. So yeah, I just noticed something weird on one of my autos. He has like a white spot on him. I'm not sure if he's sick or if, you know, the angel tried to eat him. But he's sitting his algae. But, uh, yeah, everything is growing very nice. I always get asked about this plant right here in the front, the big red one in front of the valves. I think it's, um, uh, Luigia glandulosa, is how you say it. I know I said it wrong in 
you know, in my other videos, but Luigi Glandulosa is how you say it. And I'm not 100% on that, but I'm I'm 80% sure I'm pronouncing it right. So, yep. That plant is a very good looking plant. I don't want to let it get too tall. I'm not sure how it will grow. Or, I mean, the bottom leaves really, really come off. And it's nice and short now. And it's directly in the light. So, I'm not sure what will happen if I let it grow way too tall. I'm very happy my Blixa japonica is uh, doing very good. It, this plant didn't ship very well. That's why only one stem survived and it's growing now. I'm just going to let it grow out before I decide to cut it and replant it. Um, the Rotella here in the back are doing very, very good. Here doing well. I cut the Rotella on the folio very low because uh, I didn't want them to take the light away from the Rosia folia here. Don't ask me to say the... the the scientific name is like Renecki was a folia or something. I'm not sure. I'm missing the first part. I wanted to give it enough light. And so the so the Walichi gets enough light as well. And there we go. And at the top here, we have um, the Luigi of Repens is growing very well actually too. And it's actually turning pink from the high light and the fertilizers. The iron in the water is actually making it, the pigmentation come out a lot better. So I'm hoping the entire plant decides that it wants to turn that color. And uh, you know what? I don't think I'm going to cut it. I'm going to give it nice little trims. And I'm going to let it up really high because I love it how it looks. I always cut it really short because I wanted all the, like, uh, the whole top to turn like the pinkish color. I'm not sure why. Why certain areas grow faster than other? I guess just that's how the plant is. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. It's even coming out the water. It's a very, very good looking plant. A very easy plant. I love this plant and it's very easy to keep. So yeah, everything is growing very nicely. I'm very happy with the, you know, every, the way everything is growing. The plants are just filling in super, super nice. Um, as you can see, my baby tears are really taking off, too. I have to go in there and clip them again because I think my rams got in there and my angels. You see how some of the roots are coming out here? And they decided that they wanted to dig them up a little bit. I don't know. There you go. They focused. Everything is dug up, as you can see. So I need to go over there and trim all that up. And it's, not, it's getting too bushy here. So I'm going to trim it so maybe carpet's a little bit better. But um, still a little patchy, but I'm going to get that you know carpet you know down. I gotta get the substrate divider here pretty soon, since the baby tears are, are making it's making its way over. And this plant, it took me a while to get it going, but I finally got it. If, since I was dealing with the hair algae issues, um, it just stunned the growth to like unbelievable how slow it was growing. But now it's taking off. As you can see, it's just you know shooting its way down through there. It went down under my uh, my crib. So. You know, that one's taken off too. I have more rosafolia back there. You just couldn't see it because of all the, uh, because of the Brazilian penny where they're blocking it. So I had to trim that down as well. You know, I really like this crypt here. I should have put it under a little higher light to see it grow a little bit faster. Let me see if I could focus. But it's fine over there. It's growing. I can't wait to see it when it grows actually a lot bigger. It's still very, very young and it's growing incredibly slow. But I mean, I. I guess crypts do grow slow, and it was under the under the driftwood there too. So I will see why it will grow, you know, slow. But now since I have four lights, so I have two in the front and two in the middle. I mean, one in the front, one in the back, and two in the middle running, and I was getting a lot of a much higher light. So dwarf sage, very easy plant. I mean, it's plant and go. This this will grow in any type of light. If you ask me, low, medium. As long as you have nice substrate, you know, the feed them with root tabs, they're heavy root feeders. Other than that, they would just start running all over the place. And even if you don't have highlight and while they're shooting up like mine are and I have really high light, um, just cut them. Just trim them down. It, re it responds well at being trimmed. Unlike the, the Italian vowels here, uh, I can't pronounce it, but I'm giving it a try anyways. Valisneria spiralis? 
uh, something like that, close enough. Um, this one doesn't take well to being trimmed. As you can see, like the ends turn brown on it, and only some part grow more than the other the, the other ones. I mean, this plant looked cool at the store, like when I first started getting into planted tanks, and it was so awesome, it was easy. And that, the only reason I didn't get rid of the whole thing is because of, you know, since this one, it was my first plant, I, you know, it's like an emotional attachment, so I didn't want to get rid of the whole thing, so that's why I only dug it up on the sides. But, uh, you know, to be honest, I like this plant in the corners and just letting, like, a couple strands grow really, really long. I don't like to see it so much bushy like I have it, but, I mean, it, it looks pretty nice, I'm not going to lie. It's just really hard to take care of. As you can see, it's growing from the sides over here, and it's getting in front of my hygrophilia, and it's just getting everywhere. Like, I mean, it's very invasive, too. Uh, you see how it's trying to come up to the front to get some light? So, it's very invasive. Other than that, I have no other complaints on it. Let's take a look at the fish for a while. I'm always focusing on the plants. You know, I love plants so much, but... Uh, the are pretty much uh, the barbs over here, the rose line sharks, these are really cool schooling fish. They don't school as much as the rummy nose tetras or the, or the neon themselves, but they are very, very cool fish. Um, they all get together. Even, the, even my Siamese algae eater gets in there and starts schooling with them. They're like really, really nice. They're peaceful fish. I mean, some people say they get aggressive during feeding time, but I have mine suggest, you know, they're courteous fish, and you know they're always just doing their own thing. Nobody bothers them. They don't bother anybody else. Uh, my big black angel fish over here, he's the boss of the tank, obviously. Uh, he chases, uh, you know, the guppy fry around. And usually they just hide. I have all the, all the plants where he can't get through. As you can see, he's trying to squeeze in through there. He's having a hard time. Um, he also is a shrimp hunter, but so are my rams. And I knew what I was getting myself into when I decided to, you know, to put rams and angelfish in a tank that has shrimp. Um, that's why I set up the tank gallon, like I said. And you know, it's 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 fine. I, that was expected. I do still I still see shrimp. They're hiding in the rotalas and in the in the valves. And there were there were a lot right here in the in the I'm sorry the Luigia. And when I cut the rotala, there was a lot in there. I kind of like set a few up, you know, for their own death because I, sh I should have. I just cut everything up and I took a nice big strand. It was like at least over 14 inches tall, I have to say, over 14 inches tall. And um, I gave that batch to one of my cousins that got into planet tanks. So I got two of my cousins to go from sickly tanks to planet tanks. So he got the substrate, the light set up. So I sent him a few easy plants to get him started. Um, and this stuff grows like, you know, like crazy. So in about two weeks, that one's going to be all the way back up to the ceiling again, especially now that I started dosing fertilizers. Now I see my plants are looking fuller and, you know, they look a lot stronger, actually. So I'm very happy, you know, the fertilizers doing their thing. Um, I didn't get, I got it last because, I mean, in my opinion, is it helps the plant a lot. But it's not as important as CO2. I mean, if you're going to do one upgrade to your tank, I will go with CO2. CO2 just, it's like steroids for plants. They'll grow 15, if not 30 times faster than do on the low light. I'll tell you that much. I mean, I mean, not on low light, I'm sorry, on without CO2. I mean, you can get high lights without CO2, and then you're going to have algae problems. You... Um, you know, so if I would have known better the, and I wanted to get into a high-tech plant and I want to grow all these hard plants like, you know, the dwarf baby tears, uh, hemianthus, can't, can't even pronounce it right now. I just wanted to give that a go. Um, but the baby tears, you want to do things like the Luigia gondolosa, the rosafolia. Uh, what else is pretty rare there? I mean, uh, those, pretty, those are pretty much the hard plants I really have. Everything else, you know, you throw it anywhere to grow. I'm not sure about the rotala since I've... I've only tried growing it under high light and CO2, but I'm pretty sure if I put them in my in my low tech tanks, they'll grow. Um, and nothing wrong with a low tech tank because I actually I actually prefer low tech tanks versus uh, you know the injected one. The injected ones are nice and they're very they fill in very nicely, but the low tech one is I think is so much easier to maintain. It's like I mean you plant it and just let it do its thing and let it grow. 
if you were like me and you and you were get, and you're new getting into this and you're and you're excited, you just want to see everything move really fast. CO2 is the way to go. Go with inject the CO2. I mean, I got a, I got the tank right here. Um, I got a four pound tank, and that thing. I haven't seen the little needle move yet. Everybody tells me to watch it every day to see the. Not the working pressure, the, the tank pressure needle to watch it go down. And I mean, I've used it constantly every day, a, a lot of CO2. I, I run my lights for about a nine hour photo period and it's on the whole time. It's on the same timer as the light. Uh, I bought a digital timer. I'm trying to get the CO2 to start bef about an hour before the lights and then shut off an hour before the lights go off. But I can't figure the other timer out, so I'm. St I, matter of fact, I didn't even put much time into it. I, I skimmed through it. And I looked at it for like two seconds. I threw it down, and uh, I never did. Anyways, I never looked at it. But um, yeah, I was talking about the fish too before I got sidetracked. I mean, it's a lot going on, and I and I haven't been making this videos as much as I want to. So now that I have the time, I might as well. Uh, German blue rams. If I have to say, these are the hardest fish I've ever kept. Um, if you have two females or two males, they're gonna, they're gonna want to size each other up. They want to flash the little colors and one is usually gonna, not going to be as dark as the other one because they're not as bright. People say I could have one male and up to three females. Well, I had two females together and they just wanted to, you know, fight each other all the time. It's like, it reminds me of the Siamese, uh, Siamese fighter fish, the better. Um... Two males will obviously kill one, one will kill the next before the other, uh, before the other male has a chance to run away. They say, oh, if you have a big tank, you can get away with having two males and a whole bunch of females because they're territorial. No, they will want the same territory and they will just want to kill each other. Well, at least that's what mine did in my tank. And um, they're just really hard. I had one that was too aggressive. I couldn't keep him with a, a female because he'll, he'll just want to attack him as well. I had to get rid of them. So now I have one wild caught female left and a, and a German blue male that I bought. And they seem to be getting along well. But that's how the other two started. So hopefully I get better luck with these. The angel fish, I think there's a, they're a lot more, you know, uh, you know, gentle fish. They're still, you know, they're considered semi-aggressive. I mean, there are, there are cichlids. But I mean... They're just so graceful to watch, and they'll just hang out with each other and mind their own business. If you have shrimp or fry, obviously they're going to try to eat it. They leave my neons alone. My neons are terrified of them, but, you know, they don't really get hassled anymore. Any, any, not, as, not as much anyways. Not as much as the, the guppy fry do. But, um, yeah. I got it. So I got three angels. So I got the all black one. I got the marble one right here. And I just got the new addition, which is a little white one over here. You can, see, you can see my male ram behind him. But yeah, folks, uh, thanks for watching my videos. I, um, th all the new subscribers, thank you. Um, I appreciate everybody's comment. If you have any questions, if you have any anything to tell me, or any suggestions, I'm always open. I like talking about plants. I like talking about fish. I like talking fish tank talk. Um, so yeah, just hit me up. Shoot me a comment. Hit me at... Uh, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe. I look at everybody who has a you know fish tank videos. If you subscribe to me, I go into your into your um, into your channel. And I look at and I look at what you have. If I like it, I subscribe back. Um, sorry if I haven't done it in a while. So I haven't had time. I've been busy with work, and usually I work is when I get most of my Facebook, uh, not Facebook, YouTube time in. But yeah. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Later.